All right, all right. L-D-W-M-M-A-C. This is your boy, Coach Sheldon Harrison. You're live, live, live on the Coach Sheldon Harrison Comment Sports Show Live. What did I tell y'all? What did I tell y'all? Folks, I, guys, listen. This whole Chris Cyborg and Dana White debacle, and that's what this, that, that's what this was. It, 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 this was a debacle. Guys, I done told y'all every single step of the way what's going to happen with this whole featherweight division. Guys, I done told y'all. Guys, I done put it out there. I done did PowerPoint presentations. Look, I, I have broken down so many of these women's featherweight fighters. Man, I've done so much research. I'm talking about hundreds of hours of research on the women's featherweight division, okay? Guys, I even made a PowerPoint telling the UFC what featherweights they need to bring in. What featherweight? And, you know, isn't it funny, man? Isn't it funny that three of the featherweights that I suggested, the UFC, you know, miraculously, mysteriously, they, they, they brought them in. And they brought two of them in. And they, don't tell you, they brought in a couple right after I said they need to bring them in. And it's something, man. And people will say, well, Coach, nobody watches your videos. But I do. I, now I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, I know I believe they do now. Well, you guys already know. Y'all have seen fighters come into the stream. Y'all seen fighters leave comments on the videos. I mean, y'all ain't, and nobody's blind. But you can call me a women's featherweight historian. That's what you can call me because, guys, I, <laughs> I've researched these women so much. Man, I've researched, what, the top 30 women in the world in the featherweight division. I'm talking about hundreds of hours, man. Probably, I got probably during near four or 5,000 hours worth of research on these people, man, that I've done. And, and, I, and I know the women's featherweight division. So I used to have people come at my channel and used to tell me, man, the women's featherweight division, man, they ain't, they ain't competitive. They suck. They this, they that. You know, and I've had people tell me dumb stuff like this. And I'm like, okay, they suck in comparison to who? Who they suck? I mean, what, pound for pound? Because if you want to compare the featherweight division to the strawweight division, you, really, you can't do that. You can't do that. It's different weight classes. You can't do it. You cannot do it. I mean, how can you compare the toughness of a strawweight to the toughness of a featherweight? How are you going to explain this? I mean, you want to compare it to the bantamweight division? Well, bantamweights sometimes move up and go down to featherweight. Some, some do. Some bantamweights go up to featherweight. Some featherweights go down to bantamweight. I mean, it's not unheard of. But you know, they're pretty evenly matched, man. These divisions, the featherweight division, okay, it was, it, was a, it was a dead, it was already dead. It was a dead zombie, okay, even when Dana White announced that it was dead. Because I told y'all when this was going down, I said, look, this man don't have any intention of putting this division together. And people got arguing, oh, man, why are you complaining, man? Well, you know, he built a division for Cyborg. Well, see, the thing of it is, <laughs> He only built the division to let Chris Cyborg fight in these circus fights. This is what I kept telling y'all. And what happened, man? Chris Cyborg fought in a 140-pound circus. Okay, and then she finally got a couple of fights at 145. Finally got a few. Then finally, you know, ultimately she lost her title to Amanda Nunes. But guys, I was telling you that Dana White had no intentions of building that division. And what happened? He never did build it. He, he never built it. Okay, but one thing I was wrong about, though, I figured that when Cyborg left, he would really populate that division. But I really do think that Dana White, I think they're just catering now to their demographics. That, that, that 19 and 35-year-old white male, and I keep telling y'all that that demographics is real, y'all. You know, like a lot of guys, they don't like big women. They just don't. Okay, I mean, the 145-pound division, uh, you know, I like the curvier women fight. And I don't have a problem because you see more knockouts. Okay, you see a lot more knockouts. And 155, I wish they get that. And 165, I, I wish they get that. Because you're gonna see re you're gonna see knockouts. I'm talking about people going to sleep at the 145 pound division. And, and you know, and I, I figured that oh, well, people like knockouts. Don't people like knockouts? Well, apparently, people don't really like knockouts. People don't like the best fighting the best. People don't want to see that, man. See, people, what they want is a fashion show. That's all. That's what they want, man. You, you know what they want is a model instead of a fighter. They want somebody who can dress up in a bikini instead of a fighter. That's what these people want. And they don't understand, man, that if you give, if you give people knockouts, if you give people good quality fights, you're going to have dedicated fans that's going to stick around. But see, I knew that Dana White didn't have any inspiration of building this, uh, building this division. I knew he wasn't going to do it. Because, see, the whole thing with the tough show, that solidified that in my mind when none of those 145 pounders, none of them, the, the veterans, when, no, when none of those people got picked for the UFC or to even be on the show, I knew right then and there that the 145 pound division was dead, okay? And I wish Chris Cyborg would have left sooner. I wish she would have left a whole lot sooner, okay, instead of dealing with what she dealt with. It's just what it is. Man, if people want to be real, okay, Chris Cyborg was active, okay? 
she was very active 2018 and parts of 2019. She kept taking fight after fight. She was active. Okay, Amanda Nunes really wasn't that active. And, and Amanda has historically, since she became the champion, she's never really been active like that. Okay, but Chris has been active. You know, she's been in there, you know, a lot, a lot of wear and tear. It's no excuse, but what I'm saying is she's been active against people who were really not legit 145 pounders. And I give her credit. Amanda Nunes, honestly, was a legit 145 pounder. She started her career out there. That's where she fought it. Okay? Amanda Nunes, I mean, she done battled there before. So it's no, it was no big deal for Amanda to come up to 145 pounds. Holly Holm, I mean, she boxed at 154 pounds. But, you know, in MMA, she's been mostly her career as a bantamweight. Okay? I mean, that's just what it is. So you look at who Chris has fought while in the UFC. She fought a majority of people that really, you know, were never featherweights to begin with. I mean, she fought Felicia Spencer and Amanda Nunes. And I still consider Amanda Nunes a legit featherweight because she spent so much of her career there before she dropped down to uh, Bantamweight and ultimately losing, what, her first fight to, uh, what, Alexis Davis? Ultimately losing her first fight to Alexis Davis. I want to think it was Alexis Davis. I can't really remember her resume out my hand, but I know she dropped down. And I knew she, I, I, I do know she dropped down from 145 to 135, and she fought Alexis Davis, and she lost. Okay, I remember that. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Okay? When Dana White did what he did to the tough show, I already knew it was a done deal. And I think Chris, I think he, I think Chris Cyborg knew that Dana White wasn't going to sign anybody. Because, you know, Chris did the big old dinner. And she was trying to get to know a lot of the fighters. And then, you know, then Chris discovered, well, wait a minute. None of the veterans are getting picked. No real legit 145 pounders are getting picked. So why am I here? Chris Cyborg got the hell out of Dodge. She bounced. See, I like what Scott Coker doing, man. Calling Dana White stupid. Because Dana White really is stupid, okay? He's stupid. Okay? And, and, and I'm glad that Scott Coker is just is, is really exposing this clown. I'm glad Scott Coker doing it. Because, you know, it really was. And Scott was like, you know, they had no... Scott Coker said they had no intention. And this is what I've been telling y'all. I've been telling y'all this for a minute. Okay? I've been telling y'all this now what two and a half years ago since chris cyborg got signed i said that he don't want to build this division guys i put it out there i got video after video after video telling y'all the same thing man oh you talk about a cyborg well okay it's my channel so i talk about who i want to talk about but what i'm telling y'all is that these are facts so what now? Okay, I think we're going to see this fight. But see, you know, Scott Coker says something interesting about the Nunez fight. You know, he says something interesting. And it's almost like Scott Coker is leaving it up open for discussion. I think that some point in this thing, I think Scott Coker is going to make a play. And I'm talking about a power play. He's going to make a power Listen, you Listen, y'all better listen to what I'm saying. I've been right about this whole Chris Cyborg thing since I started making videos on Chris. And guys, I'm going to continue to be right about this. Scott Coker going to make a power play. Okay? He's going to make a power play. And what he's going to do, he is going to try to make the Cyborg Nunez fight. But he won't try to make that fight until if Cyborg defeats Julia Budd. If Chris Cyborg defeats Julia Budd, Scott Coker, they're going to try to come up with a deal. They're going to try to make that fight with Nunez. They're going to do everything they can to make that fight. They're going to try to cross-promote. I don't know how Scott Coker is going to pull this off, okay? I don't know. Scott Coker is like a genie, a genie in a lamp. You rub the lamp and you ask Scott Coker, Scott Coker going to make it happen. Chris Cyborg rubbed Scott Coker's bald head. She said, Scott, I need you to give me this money. Scott, Scott Coker snapped his hands. He said, got it, done. Scott, I need to be able to box. She rubs uh, Scott Coker bald head. Scott Coker said, Chris, done. Chris Cyborg says, Scott, I need to be able to, uh, you know, cross promote. I want to fight Nunez. Scott Coker, you know, uh, Chris Cyborg rubs Scott, uh, Scott Coker's bald head. Scott Coker said, Chris, done. We'll try to make that happen for you, Chris. Notice that Scott Coker been trying to do whatever he can to accommodate Chris because he know Chris going to want to fight often. Notice he's been doing that. I tell y'all what, though. If Scott Coker can pull this off, if he can actually pull and set this fight up again with Nunez, the rest of the work got to be up to Chris. She got to get by Julia Budd. She going to have to. If she don't get by Julia Budd, then that Nunez fight is, is, is dead, dead in the water. Okay, that Nunez fight ain't happening. 
Don't want to forget it. Nunez is done in history. But I think with Scott Coker having Viacom, and I told y'all this, I said I told y'all that with Viacom in this man's back pocket, I said as long as Scott Coker got Viacom, he is going to be able to offer Chris an absurd amount of money. And what happened? And what happened? He offered Chris a stupid amount of money. Viacom. With Viacom in his back pocket, you don't think for one second that they got the money now to make this fight happen. Oh, they got money. Scott Coker can play ball with the UFC. Anybody. Anybody out there, Scott Coker here, he playing ball. Okay, Scott Coker got the ball. Scott Coker on the court. Scott Coker is the, is the boss of all bosses. So Scott got this thing wrapped up. Chris got to beat Julia Budd. She beat Julia Budd. I guarantee you Scott Coker going to make a power play. He going to get Dana White on the phone. Dana, look. Look, we got a bag for you. Dana, we got a bag. We need to make this fight happen. Let's get this cyborg at Nunez 2 going. I got a bag, Dana. I got, I got some real money to play with. Let's talk. Let's talk with your ball head itself. Let's talk. Dana White, what are you going to do, man? Turn that down? What is he going to turn down all the money on the line? Because, you know, we're not going to let this Nunez fight go away. We ain't letting this go away. First of all, as, 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 as one of the biggest Cyborg Nation fans out there, we want Julia Bud head on a platter. Okay? I want Julia Bud head mounted on my wall. And after I get Julia Bud head mounted, I want Amanda Nunez head on the wall. Okay? I want that head... I want to say mirror, mirror on the wall. Okay, whose knockout am I going to call? Why is you, Amanda Nunez? That's what I want. I want Nunez's head on a platter. And I'm talking about I want it served up, battered, bloodied, and beaten. I'm done. 